guys, my name is Stoof. I'm an artist from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and today I'm going to show you how to stretch your own canvases. I recommend stretching your own canvases over buying them pre-stretched just because the gesso process with stretching your own canvas makes a much better medium to work with and you know the quality is going to be good when you are making that canvas from scratch. To get started, you're going to need some materials. You're going to need stretcher bars. Here I have several size stretcher bars. I'm going to be making two canvases in this video. So I have two sets of stretcher bars. Uh, to make a square canvas, you obviously need one for each side, so you need four stretcher bars for one canvas. You're also going to need some canvas that's on the left side in this picture. And you're going to need a staple gun, some scissors, and then to uh, prime your canvas, you're going to need gesso, which is a water-based uh, chalky paint that really uh, tightens your canvas and makes a nice base for you to paint on. You're also going to need a squeegee, that's that little blue thing there. That squeegee is what helps you even out the gesso on your canvas. And not pictured is a hammer you might need as well. Okay, to get started, you are going to orient your stretcher bars in the way that you'd like to set up your canvas. Once you have them oriented in the proper way, we are going to snap them together. So you'll notice that the stretcher bars have a little corner piece there that fits neatly into the other corner piece there so you want to fit those together and make sure they're at a nice right angle uh, but first just try to get them all together once all of your corners have been snapped into place the next step is to make sure those angles are a perfect 90 degree. So I didn't have a triangle with me, so I just used my squeegee, which I know has a 90 degree angle, just making sure that both sides are going to line up with the stretcher bar to confirm that that angle is 90 degrees. We don't want to have edges that aren't perfect because then our canvas is not going to be a perfect rectangle. Okay, once your stretcher bars have been uh, checked for a 90 degree angle, the next step is to secure them with one staple in each corner. Next, we're going to get out our canvas. We're going to lay it flat on the ground, preferably without dogs stepping all over it. <laughs> and we are going to take our rectangle of stretcher bars and place it down on top of our canvas. Now, the stretcher bars have a lip. Uh, some of it have it on one side, and some stretcher bars come with the lip on both sides. This one has it on both sides, so I didn't have to worry about this, but if your stretcher bars only have a little lip along the edge, uh, the outer edge on one side, make sure that side is face down against the canvas. Now that we know how much canvas we need, we're going to cut off the excess. You want to have about two to three extra inches of canvas on each side. So the first step with securing down the canvas to the stretcher bars is to put one staple in the center of the longest side on your rectangle. Then you're going to rotate the canvas and you're going to put a staple on the opposite side. Now you want to make sure you have a nice firm feel on the canvas. You don't want it to be loose when you put these initial staples in, but you don't want to tug too hard to the point where you're going to distort the canvas. 
uh, you want to have so the more you practice this uh, the better you get a feel for it but uh, you want to still be able to have some give when you poke at the canvas but you don't want to see uh, you know flimsiness when you're uh, stretching it after you have placed a staple in the center of each side of the canvas the next step is to add one additional staple on each side of that initial center staple. So as you see here, I had one in the center, then I added one staple to the left, one staple to the right, spaced about one and a half inches apart. Uh, you could space them farther apart, but the farther apart you put those staples, the more likely you are to have some uh, flimsiness in your canvas. So you don't want to put them like every centimeter but you don't want to put them like four inches apart so just uh, you know use your own judgment with that and you just want to continue doing this process putting one staple to the left one staple to the right until you work your way all the way to the outer edges of the canvas on each side so once you get about an inch and a half to an inch from that corner you are ready to start folding your corners and stapling those down. Now the way we do our corners is we want to fold the canvas and tuck it under so that we form a nice little triangle at the edge there. So you'll see me do this again. So you can see that little triangle. I folded the canvas and then into a triangle and then I tucked it under and you want to make sure so you want to staple this down you want to line it up with your edge and then throw a staple down maybe two just to secure it for sure and then you, now we're gonna do our second one on the same side and we want to make sure that this one is tucked on the same side so we if our painting is going to be landscape then we want to have our corners both on that longer edge here so you want to just make sure that your folds are both on that same edge of the canvas and you want them both to be tucked under forming a triangle along the edges now we're going to repeat this process on the opposite edge you want these triangles to be also on the same side and the opposite side from the ones you just did. So again, we're going to fold that canvas under, going to make sure that we have a nice parallel line after we folded it with our edge, and we're going to tug on it a bit to make sure we have a nice uh, firm stretch, and we're going to staple it down. Okay, now all of our staples are in and our canvas is ready for the next step. As you notice, there are still a couple little wrinkles on the canvas and that is just fine because when we apply the gesso, it's going to tighten it more than it already is. So next we want to use our scissors and trim the excess canvas on the back. For some reason, when I was in college, we did not learn to do this. Um, pretty straightforward but it looks so much nicer on the back and it's just easier to hang the piece you don't have frilly little pieces of canvas hanging off the back so I definitely recommend to trim the canvas down on the back just so the edge of the stretcher bars becomes exposed again so now our canvas is looking pretty good but before we add the gesso, I'm going to give you a fast forward version of the second canvas that I stretch.
now we have two canvases that have been stretched and they are ready for some gesso. When you're applying gesso to your canvases, I recommend doing it on a surface that you don't mind getting the gesso on or putting down some newspaper. So here's my tub of golden gesso. I'm getting out my squeegee, dipping it into the gesso and just throwing some blobs of gesso onto my canvas. If you use too much, like I did, then you can just use your squeegee to get that excess off and either put it back into your gesso container or put it on the second canvas that you're making. So you're going to take your squeegee and you are going to get full coverage of that gesso all over your canvas. You don't want to have a super thick layer of gesso, you want to be able to just brush it across, get a nice even distribution and a thin layer uh, over the whole front of your canvas. And you also want to get the sides if you plan on painting the sides of your canvas. If you plan to frame your piece and you aren't going to put any paint on the sides, then you don't have to worry about that. But I typically paint the side borders of my paintings, uh, continuing the concept from the front onto the side borders. So I like to gesso the sides as well. If you don't gesso the sides and you're going to use oil paint, the oil is going to uh, seep through your canvas. So the gesso is what prevents the oil from seeping through your canvas. You want to make sure you have a nice even distribution like I said earlier. You don't want to have any spots where they're, you're squeegee mist and you don't want to have any spots where you have like a clump of gesso. You want to have it nice and evenly smoothed out all over your canvas. You can use your fingers to touch up any spots that aren't perfectly smooth, um, but if you leave a bump on your canvas, it's going to dry and you're going to have a bump there uh, when you're painting. So if you're doing an abstract piece and you want to add some texture, you could actually make the bumps with this gesso, but uh, I paint realism landscapes, so I do not want any bumps. I want a nice smooth surface to paint on. Once you are happy with your first coat of gesso, you're going to let it sit and dry for about 20 minutes, even longer if you want to come back the next day you can, and you are going to apply a second coat of gesso. The second coat is going to give you a more even surface, and it's going to make that canvas even tighter. So I definitely recommend to use two to three layers of gesso to prime your canvas. After you are done applying all of the layers of gesso that you want to prime your canvas with, you are all set and your canvas just needs to dry and then you are ready to start painting on it. I, I recommend letting it fully dry before you add any paint on it. It's going to tighten that canvas uh, to its you know full tightening abilities. and. Uh, if it's still wet, you don't want that to blend in with any of your paint either. So I'd give it about a day and then you're ready to start your painting. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned a lot. If you have any other tips that you like to use when you stretch your own canvases, let me know in the comments and make sure you subscribe to my channel to catch more of my painting videos every Thursday. Thanks and happy painting. Bye bye.